The earliest evidence of human swimming are Stone Age paintings from 7,000 years ago, and competitive swimming began in Europe 200 years ago. Humans have gotten pretty good at aquatic locomotion since then, and Cesar Celio of Brazil is currently the world's fastest swimmer, recording a speed of 2.39 meters per second in 2009. Swimming has been around since life began in our ocean vents 3.8 billion years ago, and there are many reasons why it's been so important to life ever since. The oceans represent 99% of our planet's livable space, and an estimated 50 to 80% of all life call that space home. With that many residents, the ability to navigate the seas is essential. The ability to swim evolved in unrelated lineages several times during a process called convergent evolution, where distant species acquire similar characteristics or abilities. The exact pressures of such an adaptation are still under debate, but it's pretty easy to see that an increased mobility would give a species a Darwinian advantage. What do sea turtles, crocodiles, whales, otters, penguins, and newts all have in common? Well, they all have hearts and brains, but that's not the answer I'm looking for here. All of these animals began in oceans, evolved to life on land, and then returned to the water. But what about the animals who left their watery home to never return? Did they lose their ability to swim? Although most terrestrial species have lost their swimming adaptations such as fins and gills, the swimming behavior has either never been lost or redeveloped in most cases. With that being said, can all animals swim? Well, to answer that question, we'll first have to define what swimming is. For the purposes of this video, we'll say that an animal can swim if it can be dropped in the middle of a deep, steep pool and either live out a full life in the water or reach the edge and escape. With this definition, we don't have to worry about things like the Portuguese man of war, which lives underwater, but only drifts from place to place according to the currents. Now, I'll ask again, can all animals swim? Actually, take some time to think about it. Make your brain work. Pause this video and write down at least five animals that you think might end up at the bottom of that pool. Are you ready to test your animal swimming knowledge? Let's first address the popular idea that cats hate water. They may not enjoy it, but adult cats are actually pretty good swimmers. One species, the fishing cat, is actually semi-aquatic and has evolved web digits to help it swim. In terms of the big cats, tigers and jaguars are the only ones who readily swim, but all others can and lions have been observed swimming on their own accord as well. To play cat and mouse, rodents swim too. In fact, mice are frequently used in the Morris water maze, and they propel themselves by kicking their legs and using their tail as a makeshift flagella. Horses, moose, and elk are all powerful swimmers, and are capable of long-distance water travel. If you thought that the big things can't swim, both elephants and rhinos can. Even coral, which many people have the misconception of being stationary, can swim. When a coral is born, it listens for the bustling sounds of a nearby reef. Once the reef is identified, the baby coral swims to its new home. If you thought that sloths couldn't possibly move fast enough to swim, you'd be wrong. Actually, sloths are better swimmers than walkers, and can travel three times faster in water than on land. Sloths have been known to swim in search of new habitats and mates when the rainforest floods, and they can hold their breath underwater for up to 40 minutes. If you look back in the fossil record, you'll even find evidence of a once giant aquatic sloth. Camels are known for the ability to conserve water in their dry habitat, but can they swim? Despite their environment, the proclaimed ships of the desert can swim and have been seen to cross the Nile River. In addition, there's a large camel racing facility in Dubai, which has a pool used to train and rehabilitate racing camels. Winged beasts can also swim. Although they don't enjoy it, chickens can swim when they have to. Ostriches, the world's largest and heaviest birds, frequently swim in the Sea of South Africa. Birds in general float well due to their hollow bones and feathers. Bats, which are mammals and not birds, can swim just as well. In fact, a study published in the Ohio Journal of Science noted that 16% of common brown bats swim better than they can fly. Perhaps the most well-known instance of a surprising animal swimming occurred during Jimmy Carter's presidency. On April 20th, 1979, President Carter was on a fishing trip in Plains, Georgia, when he saw a frightened rabbit swimming towards his boat. He shooted away with a paddle, and then lightheartedly joked about the event back at the White House. Some people didn't believe him because they didn't think rabbits could swim, but they soon regretted it when this picture was leaked to the public. For some ungodly reason, it made national news with headlines of Killer Rabbit, and became a symbol of Carter's unpopular presidency. Why can all these animals swim despite being either terrestrial or aerial? There are three main factors that lead to this phenomena. And the first is that nearly all these animals are naturally buoyant according to Archimedes' principle. In other words, animals float because they are less dense than water. In tandem with an innate buoyancy, the majority of animals' noses are naturally above the water in their floating positions, 
A dog is a great example. When floating on their stomachs, their natural position, their nose is at the highest point of their body, allowing them to continually breathe throughout the process. The third reason for a near universal swimming ability is that most animals' natural motion movements transfer over to the water. Let's use a dog again to illustrate this point. Dogs are quadrupeds, meaning that they walk on four legs. When they walk, they simply move their legs back and forth. If a dog does the exact same motion in the water, it will propel itself forward just the same as if it were on land. The fastest dog in the sea, by the way, is Umbra. Umbra is a Labrador Greyhound mix, and she can swim 4 miles in 73 minutes, placing her in the top 25% of human long distance swimming competitors. Now, we spent a lot of time talking about what animals can swim, but we've yet to name any that can't. Is that because all animals can swim? The answer is no, all animals cannot. Let's start with the shelled crawlers. Although all turtles can swim, all tortoises can't, and most sink to the bottom like rocks because they aren't naturally buoyant. On a positive note, tortoises can hold their breath underwater for 20 minutes, giving them time to crawl out of the water. Now, that's not to say that all tortoises can't swim, because there are a few species, including the giant tortoise, that can. Also, some species of tortoise have been found to float across oceans. One particular tortoise, for example, was retrieved alive and well on Africa's eastern coast after floating for 6-7 to seven weeks, covering over 450 miles. Aquatic snails can swim along water's surface, but terrestrial snails sink and drown. Again, this is because they aren't naturally buoyant. Giraffes are a bit tricky when it comes to swimming, because no one has ever dropped one in the ocean and watched what happened. However, thanks to computer modeling, no one has to. Hooray for science! In 2010, researchers at the Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology used 3D software to test a giraffe's buoyancy, and they found that due to its heavy shoulders, high density, and odd body shape, a giraffe could theoretically float if it were nearly completely underwater, its neck horizontal upon the surface, and its head strained upwards as to not drown. In other words, a giraffe would have to remain still in a very precise, unnatural position and somehow kick its legs without moving its neck in order to swim. Even with all that, it would still be very unstable and its head would likely go underwater. Therefore, under any real circumstances, giraffes cannot swim. This may come as a surprise to you, but hippos can't swim either because they are too dense to float. Instead, they simply trot on the water's floor and push off of the ground to reach the surface for air before sinking back down. To complicate matters even further, hippos can only hold their breath for five minutes, but they sleep completely underwater. How does that work? To manage this, hippos have developed a special reflex that allows them to push off to the surface, take a breath, and then float back down without ever waking up. Monkeys are proficient swimmers, but apes are different than monkeys. Actually, until 2013, scientists didn't believe that apes could swim. However, despite being unable to swim in the wild, a few captive apes such as Cooper the Chimp and Sierra the Orangutan can. They swim face down like humans, which violates the ability to have their noses above water. But these apes have demonstrated the ability of breath control, or choosing to consciously breathe only when their heads are above water. Breath control was thought to be non-existent in apes, but it is a fundamental part of human speech. Gorillas, on the other hand, cannot swim at all because they are constructed mostly of muscle, which is denser than water and can't float. If a gorilla wanted to swim, it would have to be trained to swim in a similar body position to humans. It could only stay afloat until it ran out of energy. But what about humans? If you threw a person who's never even heard of swimming into the pool, what would happen? Well, humans are a little unique, so let's dive deeper before we reach any conclusions. Earlier, we talked about natural buoyancy, noses naturally above the surface, and normal locomotion motions transferring to water as indicators of natural swimming ability. With the exception of bodybuilders or others who have very low fat content, humans are naturally buoyant and can float on their backs. However, humans are bipeds, meaning that they walk on two feet, and standing straight up doesn't transfer to aquatic locomotion. Furthermore, the natural swimming position is face down, and breath control is needed to be effective. None of this is instinctual, so humans often take swimming lessons to make swimming a learned behavior. In other words, humans can swim because they can learn to swim and not because they naturally know how. One reason for this is because of our large cerebral cortex, which is responsible for thinking and reasoning. This allows us to learn how to swim easier than apes, but it also puts us at a swimming disadvantage because we can panic. If a person has never swam before, and is tossed into the water. They can think about drowning, 
and think about dying. Their body then tenses up and they can't concentrate on what they need to do. As a result of our ability to think and panic, most humans can't naturally swim. But what about babies? If humans' ability to swim is hindered by their brains, maybe they can swim innately before their brains fully develop? When a baby is first born, it can breathe underwater. But don't get too excited because this only lasts until the umbilical cord is cut. This is because while the cord is attached, the baby is still receiving oxygen from the mother. That's why they can breathe while in the womb. Once the cord is cut, babies actually have some unique swimming abilities due to two special phenomena called the diving and swimming reflexes. The diving reflex causes babies to hold their breath underwater. Swedish researchers studied the reflex in 21 infants from 4 to 12 months and found that none of them choked when being pulled underwater. This reflex disappeared after about a year. The swimming reflex occurs until a child is about 6 months old, and it makes their arms and legs move in a natural swimming motion when they are placed face down underwater. Together, these reflexes make infants appear to be natural swimmers. Too bad it doesn't last. But thank you for watching Can All Animals Swim? Between some tortoises, terrestrial snails, giraffes, hippos, gorillas, and people, how many did you guess right? Leave your results in the comment section below and tell me what animals you thought couldn't but could. At the end of this video, I talked about how humans could probably swim if it weren't for their brains. As a result of this, I thought a lot about what people would be capable of without their social aspects. In the next video, we will ask the question, is a human a person without other people? And I hope to see you then.